Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Rijie from UIUC. Today, I'm very glad to introduce our paper, Retrieval Enhanced Temporary Event Forecasting on Unified Query Product Evolutionary Graph. Uh, this is a joint work with John, Danqing, Xingyu, Tong, Bing, and Professor Tarek. Uh, next, I will uh, introduce the background of our paper. Um, nowadays, more and more users are willing to shop on various types of uh, e-commerce platforms including but not limited to uh, Amazon, eBay in USA, or Pinduoduo Jindong in China. The existence of uh, such uh, e-commerce platforms can uh, largely simplify the purchasing process. However, it may also lead to the issue of uh, information overloading because there can be up to millions of products online. So various type of recommender systems are designed to uh, accurately and efficiently predict the relevant products matching the user intents to deal with the issue of information overloading. Uh, next, let, let us quickly review the user behaviors on e-commerce and how recommender systems work. The users on e-commerce has their own intents, and then they will type in some search queries to describe their latent intents. The search engine can return a list of relevant products. Finally, the users can perform various type of interactions on the products in the list. Through this process, we can say actually the a search engine acts as a bridge connecting the users and the products. However, most of the existing recommender systems are trying to directly model the relevance and the interactions between the users and the products. They largely ignore the uh, existence of the search queries. So in this paper, we are trying to show the mutual benefit while uh, jointly considering the a user, uh, the, the, the both product history and the query histories to model the user intents. Uh, so unlike the conventional product uh, uh, recommendation setting, in this paper, we propose a new setting called temporal event forecasting, where each temporal event refers to uh, uh, the interaction between each pair of user product and the user uh, query. So the user behavior on e-commerce can be presented in this temporal graph, where in each time step, the users can type in some search queries and perform the various uh, interactions with the products in the list. So given the uh, both product interaction history and query interaction history, the temporal event forecasting aims to infer the evolution of user intents so that it can uh, better extrapolate the user intents in the future. The ultimate goal of a temporal event forecasting aims to jointly predict the potential product and the query product in the future, matching the user's new intents. Uh, next, I will introduce the preliminaries and formally define our problem. As shown in previous slides, the user behaviors on e-commerce can be organized as an evolutionary graph which is a sequence of graph screenshots uh, collected from each time step. At each time step, the uh, graph snapshots consist of uh, two parts. The first is an interaction graph describing the interactions between each pair of user and product and user and uh, query. For example, it can be the user purchase one product or one user typing one search query. And the second, uh, the second part of the graph snapshot is a, a attribute graph describing the, some attributes about a product and the, the mapping information between each pair of product and query given by the search engine. Uh, given this uh, definition, the temporal event forecasting can be formally defined as follows. At each time, uh, at time step t, given the query product evolutionary graph, for each user in the user set, we aim to predict the potential product and query uh, uh, after the time step t, uh, which can match the user's uh, intents in the future. Uh, the most uh, relevant uh, framework uh, is called a uh, KG uh, knowledge graph based recommendation, where this figure shows how uh, the most famous uh, K KG based recommendation framework uh, called KGAT. However, directly generalizing this line of frameworks on our setting uh, faces two challenges. The first challenge is uh, most of the, this work, uh, frameworks uh, can operate on static graph. However, in our case, the graph are highly evolving over time. The, in, in the, the second challenge is uh, caused by the neighborhood aggregation scheme, 
uh, where, uh, which is uh, commonly used in this line of frameworks. In our newly constructed graph, the, the, the type of uh, entities uh, can be much more diverse and the graph is uh, denser. So uh, we show that the neighborhood aggregation scheme uh, can easily learn the noisy and undistinguishable representations. Uh, this can be vividly uh, shown in this uh, bar graph where we find that the KGH with a three layer of a GN can integrate up to 9,000 of nodes to represent each user. It, this will ensure introduce a large ratio of noise. So to overcome these two challenges at the same time, we propose a rated framework in this paper. Um, generally speaking, given the user interaction history towards both query and product, the rated can learn the dynamic user embedding from uh, as a dynamic graph and infer the user's new in intents in the future to boost the performance in the future. Um, to overcome the two challenges, there are three modules uh, in our framework. The first is a subgraph sampler, uh, which aims to sample subgraphs for uh, each user to constrain the range of a neighborhood aggregation so that we can uh, uh, solve the first challenge. And uh, uh, the second part is a uh, uh, structural attention, which can integrate the information from the sample subgraph to represent the user's intents. Finally, based on the sequence of the user embeddings from each time step, the temporal attention module is uh, proposed to automatically combine and extrapolate the user representations along time. Next, I will introduce them one, one by one. Um, to show the effect of a subgraph sampler, we first uh, analyze the information learned for each user via a GCN-like multi-layer network. We show that uh, um, the, the information learned for each, uh, for each node can converge to this value, which is a function of the graph structure of the uh, range of neighborhood aggregation. By simple analysis, we show that if we do not constrain the range of a neighborhood aggregation for different uh, nodes, as the, the growth of GCN layers, the range of the uh, neighborhood aggregation can be uh, tends to be similar, so leading to a very in, a similar and uh, undistinguishable uh, learning embeddings. But if we can uh, sample the different subgraphs for different uh, set of nodes respectively, we can guarantee the uh, range of neighborhood ag aggregation is different from each other, so leading to a, a informative and distinguishable uh, user embeddings. In this paper, we explore uh, two a very straightforward uh, subgraph sampler. The first is a, a k-hop sampler, where we first uh, randomly sample a bunch of nodes within the k-hop neighborhood, centered uh, around the, each node. And the second type of sampler is called a personalized pitch rank sampler, where we can first calculate the PPR value with respect to each node. And then we uh, only preserve the nodes with a higher PPR value uh, than a threshold, which indicates the uh, higher relevance uh, nodes around the each nodes. Then, um, based on the uh, sample subgraphs of for each user, we de uh, deploy the structural attention to integrate the information from subgraphs to each user. For e specifically, for each subgraph sampled for user, we use a multi-layer of graph attention network to uh, integrate the information from each subgraph. Uh, to each user in vain. And, si and since we can sample a bunch of subgraphs for each node, we integrate the information from uh, all subgraphs via one layer of MLP to better fuse the information across the different subgraphs. And then um, from each time step, we can learn the user embedding to represent the user's local uh, information. Uh, and uh, we have the sequence of uh, user embeddings from the different time steps. We propose a temporal attention module to automatically learn the temporal weights to combine the user intents from history. Intuitively, the time step with a similar or relevant user intents should be assigned on higher weights, while others should be assigned on lower weights. Uh, we use a self-attention module on the temporal domain to achieve this. Uh, we, we, we want to highlight that uh, uh, our temporal attention is uh, easy to adapt for the autoregressive setting where we can continuously fit the prediction in the last time step as an input to predict the, uh, the user embedding in the next time step. 
Um, based on the learning bindings, we use an inner product to model the relevance between uh, for each pair of a user query and user product. And uh, to train the model, we utilize the weighted approximate ranking pairwise loss to train our model. Uh, for each uh, user, we sample the uh, positive and negative uh, product or queries. And our intuition is that we want the positive samples rank higher than the negative samples. Otherwise, uh, there will be a penalty for such case in our loss function. And uh, such penalty is weighted by the relative rankings of the positive samples among all negative samples. And our uh, overall objective includes uh, two main parts. The first is uh, the ranking loss for both uh, product and query prediction. And the second part includes the uh, normal knowledge graph completion loss, which can regularize the role in banging of the uh, entities in the knowledge graph. Next, I will quickly go over our experimental results. Uh, we collect uh, five data sets from both Amazon platform and Yelp uh, platform. For Amazon platform, we use a 10 core setting to preserve the uh, frequent user product and the query entities. And on Yelp uh, platform, since we, uh, because of, of the length of uh, two queries, we first generate the pseudo queries from uh, a frequent review phrases from the user review text. And then we uh, preserve the user product and queries with uh, a higher frequency than 20. We eva evaluate the uh, temporal event forecasting in a ranking scheme, where we first rank the users, uh, we first rank the product and the queries based on the predicted relevance. And then we compare the ranking list with the ground truth. Uh, hence, we use uh, the NDCD20 and the recurrent 20 to commonly use the ranking metrics to evaluate our uh, framework. Um, this slide, these two tables shows the main results. Uh, and the setting is like this. Uh, during the training procedure, we uh, uh, use the interactions in the first 10 time steps. And we use the interaction in the next two and six time steps for validation and testing respectively. We compare our framework with uh, four type of uh, base size. Uh, the first is uh, a factor machine based models and uh, sequential recommendation models, dynamic graph learning models, as well as a uh, uh, knowledge graph based recommendation models. Uh, as shown in these two tables, um, for both uh, product prediction and query prediction, our rate framework can generally outperform all baselines. And then we conduct uh, the objective uh, application studies to uh, analyze the effect of each design um, modules. As shown in this table, we have two observations. The first is that jointly considering the product and the query as, in, uh, as a, a user interaction history can bring in the mutual benefits. And each proposed module can increase the prediction performance. Next. Uh, I will discuss the effect of a temporal attention module to deal with the first temporal challenge. We further show the uh, distribution of performance on different time steps during the testing time period. We can see that our framework can beat all besides in all time steps. And as time goes by, our uh, relative gains can actually increase, which indicates that our attention, a temporal attention module can better capture the long-term user intents. And we use this uh, case study to show how the temporal attention width can specifically capture the user intent shift over time. In this case, this user uh, has a two uh, part of uh, intents. The first is about iPad, the second is about switch. As for the user's new intents, uh, he focused more on the switch. So our temporal attention module can automatically assign higher weights to the time step with the relevant user intents. Um, next, I will discuss the effect of a subgraph sampler, which is aims to deal with the, the second challenge. As shown in this figure, uh, we, stack, we are stacking more um, layer of a GN. And in this case, our rate uh, framework with the subgraph sampler can continuously improve the, uh, the prediction performance. While the KGAT results such a subgraph sampler can hurt the performance when the GN come deeper. 
And we also show the, uh, the, the number and the, the type distribution of the sample neighborhoods with and without the subgraph sampler. As is shown in this figure, our framework with the subgraph sampler can uh, just uh, constrain the range of neighborhood aggregation within around 30 uh, highly related nodes. And it can sample a much balanced distribution among different node type on the knowledge graph. Finally, I will conclude our paper. Uh, in this paper, we formulate a new setting called temporal event forecasting to explore the mutual benefits of jointly considering the uh, query interactions and the product interactions. And we propose a rated framework to deal with this, uh, the, the two challenges existing in the current frameworks. And we show the effectiveness of rated framework compared with uh, five categories of baselines. As for the future work, we propose an end-to-end -end framework with our trainable parameters, so as to we can tune the parameter of the, the samplers to improve the generalization ability uh, on different input graph. And uh, as for the uh, sampler metrics, we, we should also consider the time factor. For example, we can uh, focus more on the most recent neighborhoods and ignore those uh, in history. And finally, as a, as a very practical settings on e-commerce platform, uh, for the streaming setting, we should uh, extend our model for the faster model retraining and or the model fine tuning on the newly collected data to uh, continuously improve our model performance. And this is the end of this uh, pray and thanks for listening. And any um, comments or questions are welcome. Thank you, thank you, Ruge. Very nice talk. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, is there any question from the audience? Okay, let me ask a question. Um, so I was very uh, curious about your uh, last point in the future work about uh, the time and looking at how that uh, as an impact. My specific question was, what about the granularity in which you define your time steps, right? Uh, do you know, have you looked at whether it has an impact, whether your steps are defined more in a coarse grain or fine grained way? Um, in, uh, um, yeah, this is a, a very good question. In our case, we just uh, um, uh, discreetly split the time span into uh, several uh, discrete time steps. And in our case, uh, the length of the time span lasts for around uh, uh, 16 time steps. But uh, another one very, very practical temporal case is that uh, we just uh, con uh, consider the continuous time steps uh, for each uh, links or for each node. In this case, the time span should uh, last uh, uh, longer. So I think um, to consider the, uh, the time factor as a sampler matrix, uh, it should uh, take uh, both a uh, continuous time step or the discrete time steps as an input uh, into consideration.